When you talk about classic watch brands, the name Breitling inevitably becomes part of the conversation. Of course, the first model that springs to mind is the Navitimer, as it's truly iconic and perhaps the first name you think of when talking about pilot's watches in general. That said, the Breitling name is on the dial of so many significant watches throughout history that breaking it all down can be intimidating. So today we look to assist by exploring what you need to know before you buy a Breitling. This video will be broken down into four primary pillars. First, the Breitling backstory and their historical significance. Two, the different model families and major points. Three, why or why not Breitling. And finally, number four, some of our top picks from their catalog. Breitling's history dates back to 1884 when Leon Breitling first began as a watchmaker, eventually setting up a more permanent home in La Chaux de Fonds in 1892, when the need for a larger facility arose as the production increased. Some of his inventions included a pulsograph, allowing doctors to read a patient's pulse, as well as a chronograph that measured up to two-fifths of a second increments. By the dawn of the 20th century, Breitling had sold more than 100,000 chronographs and stopwatches, laying a foundation for later developments in the coming decades. Leon's son, Gaston, succeeded him and was at the helm for several other significant progressions, including one of the first wrist-worn chronographs, a 1950 Breitling pocket watch featuring a strap and a monopusher. A few years later, in 1923, Breitling introduced a chronograph with two pushers, one at two o'clock and the other in the crown. It's this watch that made it possible for a stopwatch to measure multiple times in sequence, and in 1934, the brand shifted the reset pusher to four o'clock. In doing so, helping to lead the charge in redefining the layout for chronographs going forward throughout the entire industry. In 1938, Breitling, now led by Gaston's son, Willie, started their own aviation division, the Uit Aviation Department, who built cockpit-mounted flight instrument clocks that featured an eight-day power reserve, as well as developing watches specifically catering to pilots. By World War II, Breitling had become famous for their chronographs, and in 1940, introduced the very first one featuring a slide rule bezel, showcased in the chronomat. With the slide rule, pilots could then perform mathematical calculations without relying on the circular slide rules used up until that point. In 1952, the company was approached by the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association to create a special tool watch for pilots. The result was a piece that might ring a bell, the Navitimer, with an all-black dial, 41 millimeter stainless steel case, chronograph movement, and its iconic bi-directional slide rule bezel. The slide rule bezel was one of the most important tools for pilots of the era, simplifying the calculation of average speed, distance traveled, fuel consumption, rate of climb or descent, and the conversion of miles to kilometers or nautical miles. With all of these functions available on the Navitimer, naturally it was a hit amongst pilots. The Navitimer known as the Reference 806 was introduced on a wider scale in 1956 with the Breitling brand logo above the Wings logo instead of the AOPA logo. The Navitimer even made it to space with astronaut Scott Carpenter specifying one with a 24 hour dial known as the Cosmonaut to distinguish day and night during his 1962 orbital mission. By this time, the Navitimer's subdials had gone from black to silver or reverse panda as is known today. And while the Navitimer certainly garners the lion's share of attention when talking about Breitling, the brand does have a long list of classic references in its 20th century heyday. That includes the elegant premier chronographs, the no-nonsense look of the AVI models with their 12-hour bezels, the Super Ocean Dive Watch series, which arose in 1957, being among the first wave of proper dive pieces in the industry, the Top Time chronographs with its racing design and tachometer bezel, the chronomatic automatic chronographs, and later, the iconic modern chronomat with its distinctive bullet-style bracelet of the 1980s. With the advent of quartz, Breitling's fortunes faded like many brands in the industry, and the brand passed from the family in 19. 79, with the new owners eventually building the brand back up, focusing on larger, flashier pieces during the period, building one of the most recognizable luxury names in the industry, especially in the United States. Then in 2017, the company was bought by a private equity firm with George Kern, a leading veteran of the watch industry, coming in to lead the organization. The timing was fortuitous as vintage watches were gaining some real traction among collectors and the Breitling name still had huge cachet among those in the know. Kern was motivated to bring the name back to its rightful place among prestige brands and started on that path with the release of the black dialed Navitimer Reference 806 1959 re-edition. He went as far to bring in one of the world's biggest Breitling collectors, Fred Mandelbaum, as a consultant on the project. The new version of the original Navitimer was a success and it kicked off a resurgence in popularity for the brand. 
This along with the rebirth of the Premier name, the updated Chronomats, Avengers, and the acquisition of the Universal Genève name make for an intriguing last decade. But now let's take a look at the modern Breitling catalog to help give some color to how to navigate it. There are currently nine Breitling model families, so we'll touch on each one briefly. First up is the classic AVI, the contemporary version of the Copilot 765 AVI Pilot's Watch unveiled in 1953. Now you won't see the 15 minute recorder at three where you'll find the date window on most watches, but the modern AVI does feature the familiar ratcheted bi-directional 12 hour bezel and a three register chronograph layout. Movements include the value based Automatic Caliber 23 and the B04 Automatic GMT Chrono Movement and Breitling's Caliber B09, the manually winding version of their column B01 automatic use in the historic re-editions. The AVI range is the descendant of those cockpit flight instruments made by the in-house aviation department, including stainless steel, red or white gold, and even ceramic case materials. Sizes span from 41 millimeters for the vintage inspired re-editions to 42 millimeters for the modern versions, and the bigger wristed will also be happy to find 46 millimeter case choices too. Next up is the shining star of Breitling's lineup, the iconic Navitimer. Now encompassing a broad range, there are more than 40 variants under the Navitimer umbrella. From the small case three-handers to gold and diamond decorated variants, all the way up to the show-stopping chronographs and precious metals. If you had to pick the one icon from the brand, this would be the one. In recent years, the Navitimer has been seen only as being viable for those with larger wrists. However, that is not an accurate representation nowadays. With the 41 millimeter case versions wearing like 39 millimeters on the wrist, given their short lug to lugs of 46.5 millimeters. For context, that is half a millimeter shorter than the 38 millimeter Hamilton khaki fields on wrist, or a full millimeter smaller than the Tudor Black Bay 58. Of course, the larger Navitimers are there too in 43 millimeters and 46 millimeters, with those along with the 41s getting their in-house column wheel chronograph movement, the B01. Some of the other high points include the newer 41 millimeter GMT model, three handers that simplify the presentation, and the historic limited re-editions of the manually wound 806 chrono in steel or precious metals. Moving on to the Avenger series of modern pilot's watches, you're presented with a range of 20 references that encompass 42 millimeter automatic stainless steel three-handers in a variety of dial colors to larger versions up to 46 millimeters. The lineup even offers B01 powered chronographs in steel or titanium and the 44 millimeter night mission versions, which look especially tough with their blacked out ceramic cases and bold dials. The Avenger series has been a favorite of Breitling fans for years, and it fits the bill perfectly for those in search of a contemporary temporary pilot's watch with substantial wrist presence and the effortless tactical cool to go along with it. Now we come to the most refined line of Breitling chronographs, the historic Premier family. The name was introduced in 1943, and many of these vintage pieces represent grails for discerning vintage collectors. These watches in their simplest form come with two register orientation with automatic variants running on the B01, which will deliver a case size of 42 millimeters. For those that desire something a bit smaller, that is where the manually wound B09 comes into play, trimming a significant amount off the thickness, as well as being 40 millimeters in diameter, with a piece like the pistachio green being one of the brand's best sellers. The Premier only gets more complicated from here, including the least expensive split second chronograph that I am aware of on the market with the Duograph and the beautiful calendar watch known as the Daytora, which for its price is one of the best points of value in all of watchmaking for a watch of the complication type. For context, this watch often gets compared to the Patek Philippe 5290P. At the top of the range, you'll find the 42 millimeter Premier Tourbillon with three choices, each named for different generations of the Breitling family. These are available in white or yellow gold, as well as platinum, and represent the absolute pinnacle of the Premier lineup. The unique caliber B21 combines a tourbillon and chronograph in a movement co-developed with La Jupere. Next up is Breitling's most playful chronograph line, the Top Time. Originally developed as a youth-oriented alternative to the pilot-specific Navitimer, the Top Time made its impact on pop culture with model variants like the distinctive Zorro versions. A Top Time even made it onto the silver screen when James Bond wore one in Thunderball. That very same prop watch was discovered in a car boot sale in England for just 25 pounds and sold in 2013 for nearly 104,000 pounds. 
The current Top Time family has plenty to choose from, with nearly all of them being collaborative special editions. They include tie-ins to iconic names in motoring, including Ford Mustang, Chevy's Corvette, the Shelby Cobra, and motorcycle brands like Triumph. The case sizes extend from 41 millimeters in steel and increase to a 43 millimeter bronze tourbillon version and 44 millimeter ceramic case variants, also featuring tourbillons. Movements utilized include the Breitling B23, a COSC certified version based on Valjoux or Salita calibers, along with the previously mentioned B01 and B21 calibers. Now we come to Breitling's largest collection in regards to references with the Chronomat. As mentioned, the Chronomat has lived a few separate lives within its life cycle, first appearing in the 1940s. However, the design style that most informs today's collection was from 1984. These pieces at the time were designed with input from the Italian Air Force Jet Exhibition Squadron. The distinctive hallmarks of the model include rider tabs on the bezel that make for easier gripping, seating the bezel above the crystal to serve as a way to protect the glass, and the framed rouleau or bullet bracelet, with its lengths that make it one of the most comfortable wearing experiences in its class. Today's sizes include 32mm quartz three-handers to bold 44mm chronographs. One of the most desirable configurations are the 40mm GMTs, available in a wide variety of attractive dials while delivering 200 meters of water resistance and COSC certified movements. Moving up to 42 millimeters in size, chronographs make their appearance equipped with B01 movements and also can be paired on a rouleau style rubber strap. Further up market, the chronomat becomes available in precious metals, jeweled versions, and the top of the line 44 millimeter red gold super chronomat 140th anniversary edition featuring the B19 perpetual calendar movement with a moon phase supplied by Dubai de Praz. So far, we have been very aviation heavy, although diving as a category from Breitling is additionally strong. The Super Ocean name goes all the way back to 1957, with the originals being trailblazers at the time as professionally capable dive watches were still in their infancy. With its signature concave bezel and distinctive oversized triangle on the circle dial markers, the Super Ocean had a bold look that epitomized mid-century design. The early Super Oceans boasted a stellar 200 meters of water resistance, but Breitling's innovation didn't stop there. A later version of the Super Ocean chronograph featured a unique caliber dubbed the Slow Motion, which used the chronograph to measure time time spent at depth. The chronograph hand made one revolution per hour, making it a simple matter to view the elapsed time. The contemporary versions of the Super Ocean Heritage begin with the vintage style B20 Automatic 42, which takes classic cues and pairs them with a rework case and the B20 movement. It's actually a joint effort between Breitling and Tudor, based on the COSC certified MT5612, a caliber that lives inside the 42mm Pelagos. The Heritage B20 is also available in 44mm and 46mm cases for those with larger wrists while keeping the retro modern aesthetic. For a more truly vintage feel, there's also the Super Ocean Heritage 57 edition, with case contours that faithfully look to the original, available in several special editions, utilizing a no-date caliber 10 with a Salita base. Further up are the chronograph models, which include both Valjoux-based takes that sit in a more attainable position compared to those B01 powered options. From the vintage to the contemporary, we then come to the modern Super Ocean, which while still possessing some vintage Breitling style touches, namely the dial aesthetics of the vintage slow motion chrono, is very much more of a modern dive watch. Available in a broad range of sizes and colorways, you'll find punchy orange, yellow, white, and turquoise dials, along with more traditional black, blue, and darker green variations. This is also a line where Breitling samples with materials such as bronze for a suitably nautical feel, two-tone models, in steel, and even full red gold. Movements in the modern Super Ocean are the Caliber 17, a COSC certified chronometer based on the Salita SW200, with an unconventional slanted bracelet being part of the design DNA. And the final Breitling family is the No Nonsense Professional Series. These are the function over form collection built for harsh environments, geared towards explorers, extreme athletes, and anyone that needs a watch that can take some abuse. The watches under the professional umbrella feature high performance quartz calibers for maximum reliability, and they boast some other unique specifications too. The Endurance Pro chronographs are constructed of Breitling's proprietary composite known as Bright Light, and the movements are COSC certified super quartz chrono calibers quoted to run no worse than 10 seconds off from perfect time a year. They come in multiple colors, being available in 38 millimeters to 44 millimeter options. Next up is the Aerospace B70 Orbiter, a direct descendant of the original Aerospace Analog Digital Quartz Chronograph from 1985. Like that initial release, the B70 is constructed of titanium, and the new model was created to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the record-setting circumnavigation of the Earth and the Breitling Orbiter 3 hot air balloon. 
And additionally, there's the unique Breitling Emergency, a 51 millimeter titanium beast tool watch that has a distinctive feature, a built-in emergency transponder beacon activated by extending the antenna hidden behind the second screw down crown. Bottom line, if you're out in the wilderness in serious trouble in a remote part of the world, this is what you wanna have on your wrist. So now that we've touched on some of the highlights from Breitling, let's talk about why or why not going for Breitling. Let's start with why not. What are some of the considerations that I would bring up when looking at this brand when you're trying to make a buying decision? Now, first up is going to be, despite some progress, this is still a brand that will size many people out for certain styles, mostly looking at larger starting points for some of their dive watches, usually around 42 millimeters being those smallest sizes that you can get into. Yes, there are 36 millimeter super oceans, which is important to mention, but there are some strange gaps in their sizing where I think many people might overlap with that also extends into some of their chronomats and other chronographs throughout their collection. So if you are a smaller wrist, I won't say that it is as bad as it was in the past, but Breitling definitely does cater a bit more to those on the larger side of the wrist size spectrum. Another point I'd bring up for those concerned about value retention, I would say that Breitling does fall behind some of the other peers in its class. Think Omega, Rolex, IWC, and others. Another thing I'd bring up is when looking at some of the movements on the inside of their three hand models, mostly those where you have to look at when talking about this are going to use Eta Salita bases in many instances outside of something like the Super Ocean Heritage. Yes, they are going to be COSC certified and they are not going to just drop in a movement and call it a day. I know for many though, that might be a point where the value for money not make as much sense compared to some of the competition as well. And then one final thing I would mention with Breitling is that they have a lane that they do very well. They don't necessarily do dress watch as well. So if you are wanting to get something more elegant, this would probably not be the first brand that would be top of mind uh, to consider. The Premier is absolutely viable, but more for the chronograph DNA rather than a traditional dress watch. But now we shift to why Breitling? And first, the thing I'll mention, Amazing Heritage. They are as influential as any brand when it comes to chronographs and pilot's watches. You could go as far in saying that for chronographs as well as pilot watches, there's not a brand that was more innovative in the 20th century. They also have several icons and many brands are just chasing for one icon. Breitling has many. They have the Navitimer, they have the Chronomat, the aerospace models are not replicated anywhere else in the industry. And this is just scratching the surface. There are many others, but Breitling is a brand of icons, no question about it. And all of these designs that I mentioned, you talk about the Navitimer, the Chronomat, these are peerless designs. In other words, if you want these watches, you're just not going to be able to scratch the itch looking elsewhere. I mean, look at the Chronomat, that is unmistakably Breitling, and you're gonna be hard pressed to find anything that's going to be able to do the same job as the Chronomat if you like this style. A couple other things I would mention is Breitling does dial colors exceptionally well. You look at the Top Time family, the Chronomats, I love their use of green. They do green superbly across a variety of different shades. And then pieces like the pistachio green being a great example of that within the Premier line, showing how they can have this more muted, understated tone that is less uh, maybe poppy uh, compared to some other greens out there. And then finally, they have one of the most proven in-house chronographs. And if you're looking at chronographs in general, Breitling dominates. The B01, it helps set a standard for a chronograph movement made in-house for under $10,000. And you have so many different chronograph collections from this brand to get lost in. So now some quick final suggestions based on categories and where I would look. If you're looking for a dive watch from Breitling, very easy for me, I would recommend the Super Ocean Heritage. I like the design of it, but also the tie-in to the Tudor movement with that 70 hour power reserve, COSE movement, uh, that all makes for a pretty compelling package and a sleeper in the entire collection in the industry, and especially within Breitling's collection. For the best go anywhere, do anything watch, I would look at the Chronomat GMT. You have a COSC certified movement. You're getting 200 meters of water resistance, amazing colors. Also the bracelet is so comfortable. If you've never tried on a Rulo bracelet, do yourself a favor and do it. It is unlike anything else in the industry. Now for the dress category, as I mentioned, dress watches are not something that Breitling does that well, but if I was going to point to one model family that does it well, it's going to be the Premier. Yes, it's the Chronograph, but the Premier B09 with the manual wound movement, 40 millimeter case, a little bit thinner, can slide underneath some dress cuffs. This is the one area that I would recommend scratches the itch of going for a dress watch from Breitling. For the best retro designs, I like the top times. They infuse color exceptionally well. You're also getting the motorsport tie-ins, which I think are a nice draw. But I've always been a huge fan of vintage top times. And I think the contemporary collection, both on size with those 41 millimeter options, another opportunity for those with smaller wrists to look at the brand to go along with it. For best aviation, this one's easy and you could probably argue maybe the best entry point for the brand in regards to understanding the DNA, their importance, it's the Navitimer. Next category is most distinctly Breitling. 
There's a few you could put in here. I'm gonna argue the Chronomat. Yes, the Emergency is distinctly Breitling. The Aerospace is distinctly Breitling. But if I want something that might be more viable for the everyday and for more people, the Chronomat would be where I would recommend. The bezel is unique. The handset is distinct. The dial, the rider tabs, the bracelet, of course, all of that creates a package from a design standpoint that is unparalleled. And then one final thing I'll throw in here is a wild card. So where a brand gets a little bit crazy and funky, where would you look for Breitling? I would argue here, the aerospace is the place to go. You're getting a watch under $5,000, analog digital display, uh, aerospace B70. This is a design that I would argue is one of their icons. And when someone thinks of Breitling, it's probably on a short list at the top of consideration when it comes to the image of the brand. But all right, guys, that is the video here today, looking at everything you need to know before you buy a Breitling. If you enjoyed this video, let me know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really do appreciate that. If you'd like us to continue this series of looking at brands like this to this very fine degree, detailed degree, let me know in the comments down below what brand you'd like us to do a video like this with next. Also check out teddybaldestar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, including Breitling. Every watch from teddybaldestar.com comes with quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty. Also, if you have any questions about the watches on our website, reach out to us on live chat. We are on live chat basically every hour of the day or on 18 hours a day. I know it's not every hour, but it's a big portion of the day. So if you have a question about a watch on our website, reach out to us, we'd love to help you out. Also, any purchase on our website helps us keep doing what we're doing here and producing content. We love what we do here, so really do appreciate that as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.